Coming up, a new old one from Cold Steel. I get some survival cards, and then we talk about 10 great double-edged custom fixed blade knives right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite, three favorite comments from this week uh, was from Abby Bremner. 4162 talking about the agent 001 abby says damn so beautiful i'd use mine for hunting great little belly and ergos so deadly with the right skills too uh he's talking about this knife here the agent 001 uh that comment sort of inspired uh the topic of conversation today on the show uh this is a uh, double-edged um, knife as you can see it is a little uh, fixed blade uh i i am the co-designer on this with Tim Kell, not with T uh, Tim Kell, and uh, I am not including this later because it's uh, more of a production knife, small batch production knife, and so very sweet. Of course, you get yours customized, uh, but I'm talking about one-off handmade knives coming up. Um, but Abby, I appreciate it, and you know this knife does come in a single-edged version. Uh, you can get this single-edged, and I imagine for hunting that might be better. Um, you know, if you're going to have your fingers up there on the blade or if you need it for any sort of uh, light batoning or anything, you probably want a a, a, a single edge version of the Agent 001. Just go to TKL Knives and order yours today. <laughs> Sorry. Got to wet the whistle. All right. Next up from GC2696, talking about my fixed blade collection video, I think part one. He says, holy feature length knife porn. <laughs> and I got to say. Uh, yeah, that cracked me up. It it really is. I mean, if you're not 53 year old, 53 years old and collecting knives since you were about 10, you probably have no idea what it's like to have a ton of fixed blade knives. And uh, sometimes you you lose track of that, and you do a video and you show all the stuff off. And um, I say that like I still have some of those knives from when I was younger. I did give a lot of them away to my cousin, but yeah, a lot of knives there. Holy feature length knife porn. I appreciate it. JC2696. And lastly, Dentarios, uh, <laughs> talking about my fire starter uh, from last week. He says, but Überleben means survive. I think I said it means over life. Or I was trying to figure out what it meant by putting together Uber and Leben. Um, Uber meaning over and Leben, the definitive for to live. And, uh, but thank you, sir. I do appreciate it, uh, Dantarios. And this echoes a comment that I didn't put in here about uh, the barong my brother gave me where someone said, do your research. Uh, and it was funny because there were uh, several kind of vagaries in his own comments. So do your research. Yeah, it, it is good advice. Take it. And I will too. All right. All that said, let's get us to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. Today in my front right pocket, as has been a lot recently, uh, is the Banjara from Artisan Cutlery designed by Dirk Pinkerton. Yeah, you see those blemishes in the micarta too. Uh, bacon grease. What can I say? You cannot get it out. And uh, it permeates. Uh, but this knife has been great. Uh, I've been complaining a lot about my jacked up thumb. I know I nicked a nerve because I'm going through all sorts of weird sensations in my thumb. It's like it's coming online slowly over weeks. I think I'm getting out of my extreme pain uh, phase into a, uh, oh, I can feel in this portion now. Uh, and when I was in the extreme phase, uh, extreme pain phase, jimping was bothersome. Uh, so a thumb plate was welcome and a flipper also. Anything to take my thumb out of the uh, equation has been great. Uh, I have not been liking any unlocking any of the knives the way I traditionally do because I always use my thumb. So lately I've been using my forefinger. The Banjara by Pinkerton. Uh, Dirk's one of my favorite designers. He's a great guy, a, a, a wonderful human, uh, but also just uh, Look at that. Uh, he's an amazing knife designer with a uh, a real depth of knowledge in historical. I'm going to put this under the knife cam. That's what it's there for. Uh, 
with a depth of knowledge in historical and ethnographic uh, knives and weaponry, which uh, I, is a particular interest to me. And you see all sorts of mashups in his design, uh, which I love. Uh, this, of course, is called the Kami. I call this the Banjara. This is not the Banjara. That is a Persian knife. This here is the Kami. My apologies. Uh, K-A-M-I. Kami is uh, an Indian knife maker who makes, or a ne Nepalese knife maker who makes kukris. So you can see the kukri inf influence in this blade. A little less so in the handle, but the handle is uh, definitely echoing a lot of what we're seeing in... Um, EDC fixed blade, uh, fixed blades for self-defense with that sort of uh, real pronounced eagle's beak in the back uh, for slashing to keep the knife in your hand for slashing, but also a very nice thumb plate for your uh, thumb in reverse grip. So we're seeing that all here in the uh, Artisan Kami designed by Dirk Pinkerton. All right, next up uh, in my front right also, that's where I've been keeping the slip joints lately, uh, right next to the main knife, uh, is the Venom Jack. Uh, this has been, I got to say, one of my favorite Jack Wolf knives. Uh, recently, I keep coming back to it. I mean, I love the Benny's Clip. That's the, the most recent one. And I do love that uh, purple Kira Knight, a.k.a. Rita Hayworth curtains. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Covers. But this knife here with this combination, which surprised me, I, I, I wanted a different one. I wanted the napped titanium version of this. And uh, and this is what Ben sent me much to my uh, joy and surprise. It is so beautiful uh, with this red carbon fiber, dark red. Um, what is it called? Uh, dark matter something carbon fiber. I don't know. Red, deep, dark matter, carbon fiber, red. But it's got that awesome blade that it's if if you could make a Warncliffe blade with a belly, which obviously you can't, it's it it just doesn't make sense. This would be it because it is a Warncliffe blade with a straight spine uh, aligned with the top of the handle, but it's got that sort of radically descending straight edge, which sort of has a recurve effect. So this is not only a really, really good cutter and just an awesome uh, knife with its full height hollow grind uh, S90V blade, uh, but it is such a looker. To me, I, I always say it looks like an artifact. I, I just love it. It's my favorite Jack Wolf in a long time. In a long time. In like two months. All right. Uh, next up, this one I, I started to carry and then it was just with me because I need to rework the sheath. I need to make one for myself for my personal carry, but this sheath and knife is very cool. This is the Polite But Dangerous Tools dagger. Polite But Dangerous Tools. He was on the show. Um, here, look at that sheath. Okay, so this is a, a Kydex sheath with leather. This is the belt loop. So this is a great night knife for belt carry. There's the leather covering with the uh, sort of aged look on it over the Kydex. I really, really like the aesthetics of this. But for in the waistband carry, uh, I, you know, I've tried to swap out various uh, discrete carry concepts and ulti clips on here. I, I think I just need to make a new one for the way I carry it. Uh, but as I keep it in, in my drawer for viewing and storage, it will stay in the in its, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, natural sheath. But here's the knife. Man, it is so beautiful. I really like Polite But Dangerous Tools. I love these. The Sam's blades are beautiful. They're, they have that sort of napped look. Uh, this one is very thin and pretty damn sharp. I've been working on the edge a little bit. One of the edges was sharper than the other. That tends to happen when you get a dagger that's not produced in a factory. Uh, but... I, this thing is wicked sharp, very thin, and very nice to carry. Uh, even, so the reason I don't like to carry it in this sheath is that um, the edges are a little sharp for my, okay, I'll say it, for the fat on my spare tire. I like it rounded off a little more, but I don't want to I don't want to in any way alter the sheath because I, I think the sheath itself is beautiful and somewhat ceremonial. I really like what he does with his sheaths. So I'll make an alternate. Um, that accounts for my spare tire. Anyway, you got jute uh, underneath a Sukamaki wrap. It has an incredible grip. 
Um, I love the aesthetics. I'm very much into that sort of napped look. And this is a great EDC self-defense knife. Uh, it was bigger than I expected, which, of course, I, I like. Uh, and I know he makes single-edged versions that are smaller and more like ski and do's a little bit. Um, but this one, with that wrap and just the overall shape, it's so beautiful. Uh, I like this knife. I can't wait to carry it. So uh, I will make myself a carry sheath for when it's not on the belt. Belt carry for me is at home. All right, last up for emotional support. And I haven't had, oh, it matches my shirt. That was unintentional. Haven't carried this one in quite a while. This is the Vero Engineering uh, Synapse. I believe this is the mini uh, or, or the smaller version with its three inch blade. I could be wrong, uh, but what a fantastic and beautiful knife. It is so fun to play with. I know that's totally a uh, first world toy right here, spoiled toy here, uh, but it is very nicely, thinly flat ground. So it's a great cutter. Uh, I believe this is M390 blade steel. Uh, it's number 234, which I love uh, because whenever I see that on the clock, either 1234 or 234 or 817, certain, certain, or one, two, three, yeah, certain times on the clock, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So I'm glad I got uh, 234. I know, silly. Uh, but I did take these scales and make them my own, turned them maroon. They were sort of that dusty, green micarta where you can never quite get it saturated with color it was kind of more epoxy uh so i i switched out the didn't switch it out i writ dyed them maroon i love the way that looks didn't use this to do anything but enjoy today it is such a beautiful knife and with this uh um flipper tab and very generous a uh, gaping you know area to close with uh, like I said, this right thumb still coming online with this kind of dexterity, and it was a great knife to just fidget with. So, you know, knives can be physical therapy tools if you cut your thumb too deeply with a knife. It's like a snake biting its tail. All right, let me put these away. And as I do, let me remind you to tell me what you are carrying today. I love hearing about that. Uh, Sometimes inspiration, sometimes just interesting to keep your finger on the pulse and see what people are into, especially, you know, people here. So cheers. Okay, I'm drinking a lot of coffee this morning because last night uh, my younger daughter and I, uh, Olympia and I, camped out for a majority of the night camped out in the backyard. Uh, we're, we're solo here. Uh, my wife is elsewhere. My other daughter is elsewhere uh, for the, the week and weekend. And uh, so we had a little adventure in the backyard. It was great. I used my boon too. It was on the, it was on the belt the whole time. We pitched a tent. A buddy of mine gave me a tent to, uh, to check out and also a little camping cot. And of course I brought out a yoga mat. That was for me. My daughter had the cot uh, we built a fire, cooked a delicious, she made croque messieurs. That's what we had. It's like a, a really, really delicious French grilled cheese. She made those. Uh, we did them over the open fire in cast iron. We had some progressive chicken noodle soup, which in retrospect was not a good choice. I, I should have just made soup. Uh, but it was really, really fun, and we had a great time. Um, uh, but... I do know that I need to get a cot myself, a yoga mat, even on soft grass does not suffice. The Buntu is awesome. Uh, I also had with me the companion, the Mora companion. I love this thing. Uh, let me just show you before I move on to the next actual agenda item here. Um, I used this and a little bit of the Buntu, but mostly the Mora knife, which is incredible uh, to carve with. I, I carved this out of one of our pieces of firewood. Uh, it's a little spatula, you know, and it's differently shaped than how I first wanted it, but I did an extra gouge. So I had to make it look a little bit more traditional. I'm not saying it's done, but it was done enough to cook our food last night. And uh, I wanted it to look like a long tapered triangle. So from here to the tip, I wanted it to be one continuous. And as you can see, it didn't happen because. Uh, a couple of extra deep gouges with this incredible carver uh, kind of changed the shape of things. 
So uh, great, great night last night. I want to do more camping next time. I, I want to go camping at this place close by here where I might be able to catch a fish. And I want to cook a fish and eat a fish. And all you guys are listening. You're like, wow, Bob, that's incredible. What an adventurer. Uh, but, you know, for me, I'm a suburban guy. I haven't done urban to suburban guy. I haven't done this stuff since I was a kid with my grandpa. So um, I've kind of had a... A, a little taste and a lot of it has to do with using knives. Oh, what can I use my knife for? Suddenly I'm camping out with my daughter in the backyard, but that will change. It will expand. Soon you'll be hearing my elk hunting stories from, uh, you know, out west. All right. Uh, I want to show you what I'm going to be giving away. Uh, what we're going to be giving away in appreciation to the great gentleman junkies we have here on the channel. Uh, that is the high level of support on Patreon. We're giving away this brand new beauty from Off Grid Knives. This is the Mamba V3. And this is in titanium, that beautiful golf ball texturing titanium with Magna Cut. Yeah, that's four inches of Magna Cut on that. I don't know, sort of spay style blade, reverse Tonto style blade. Uh, such a beautiful knife. I am digging this. I've been carrying the, uh, the um, tan and gray version of this. Uh, which he also sent along. I think that's getting adopted into the collection. I have a nice collection of off-grid knives. And I got to say so far, and there have been a lot of knives, and every time I'm like, oh, my God, this is my favorite. Like when the Cayman uh, XL folder came out. Oh, my gosh. But this, this thing is amazing because it is this knife, which was always my runner-up. This is the Mamba V2, Black Mamba V2. And the reason it was my runner up, because that's a three and a quarter inch blade and it is an incredible knife. Uh, but, you know, I have some issues and I need something bigger in my pocket to make me feel secure. So this one right here is exactly in my wheelhouse. Same exact shape, same exact almost everything. Some of the proportions are slightly different, obviously, for to, to make up for the size difference. But what an awesome knife. I've been carrying mine pretty much constantly. It's also uh, great because I've, I need flippers right now and I need a uh, big kind of easily manipulated and accessed locks. And that is the case here. Uh, the other thing the lucky gentleman junkie giveaway uh, winner will get in the month of October 2024. You're behind a month, Bob. Is this. The bullet bit driver. It's an awesome bit driver. This is the V2 version. I have the V1. Look at that. Look at the, it's like a fidget toy too. Look at the bearings there, man. Still going, still going. So this is a part of the giveaway. Still going. Wow. I'm going to stop it. All right. So gentleman junkie this month gets this package. So just go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. Uh, to sign up, or you can scan the QR code on the screen that Jim will flash up periodically throughout the show. I, I know I see him do that. It is, oh, there you go. What do you know? Right there. Uh, you can scan that and join. And uh, if if the gentleman junkie level is too much, I totally get it. There's the tactical and the traditional junkie. You can be one of those two. You're like, I don't want to be a junkie at all. That's bad. Well, just come watch the show, share the show, comment, and subscribe. I love you. All right. Still to come, Knife Life News right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. We talk about the James brand here pretty much only um, in Knife Life News, uh, though I have had one uh, on loan. That was a pretty nice knife. Uh, James brand has a new Carter. That's uh, the Carter, uh, one of their models. It's actually their most popular model. It's even more popular than their flagship model, uh, the Chapter, which is kind of funny because uh, and I say it's funny because as a creative person, you make things and then you put things out and you're like, I know that this is this is my masterwork. People are going to resonate with this. And then they're like, no, actually, we'll, we like this other thing, this earlier thing when you were less sophisticated. 
so in that case, uh, for the James brand, it's the Carter. They're coming out with a carbon fiber version of it. A beautiful sort of, <coughs> pardon me, beautiful sort of contoured handle with that deep, um, deep sort of sweeping uh, chamfer there for the forefinger, uh, deep carry pocket clip. Uh, but this beauty here is a fidgety crossbar. Uh, that's the thing about this. I think that's why people have gone for this. It's just about three inches at 2.8 uh, inches. Uh, this time it's in VG10 uh, with two slabs of carbon fiber, bringing the weight down to 2.8 ounces. So this sucker, I'm so sorry, people, 2.8 ounces. It's available now. And uh, I think that's why this one is so popular. It is fidgety and it's at three inches. Uh, those two things really come together to make uh, an awesome knife. Uh, some of you might not like the fact that it's got a thumb plate. How do you feel about the thumb disc slash thumb plate? Let me know. Next up, this one's cool. From CRKT, uh, the new Q and Q Compact. Now, uh, they've announced maybe four knives coming out, but these two have really uh, kind of... Uh, gotten my attention they're from richard rogers who's an awesome designer he's been on the show uh they're not only talking about a re-release of a persian he made with a couple of designs but uh, a couple of design changes but this one right here that we have on screen this is the q compact now or no that that one this one here is the q compact the one in the big beautiful picture up where there are all the other ones that's the q now there are two different versions, and there are some subtle differences. Uh, this version that we see on screen right now is the compact version. That's in aluminum, or aluminum as we Yanks say, uh, with a G10 inlay and um, S35VN blade steel. That uh, blade is 2.95 inches, so for, for, uh, for all intents and purposes, three inches and then the big version or just the q not the q compact but the q uh, is 3.31 inches of yes that's right magna cut uh it's limited unlike the other one unlike the compact this is limited uh it does have a titanium handle with carbon fiber inlays jim could you scroll up to the very top uh, so they get get their eyes on that one too uh, this will be available. This is not. Uh, this is now. Be Thank you, sir. Uh, that's it right there. That's the big one, the Q. And these are going to be made available at Blade Show West coming right up. So uh, check them out. I, I like what CRKT is doing. I don't know where these are made, uh, but they are using a lot of, um, you know, I think Lion Steel and some other foreign manufacturers that do some things with some materials that they don't do here. Uh, so. Pretty interesting, pretty cool. All right, next up, this one is from Savivi. Savivi. Um, I think Savivi is how people who say um, Scorsese, Scorsese for Scorsese, that's how they say Savivi. Anyway, this is the Savivi Yonder, and it's dropping in October. This was a collaboration with Zach Whitmore, and it won the Blade Show 2024 Best Buy of the Year. And I got to say, uh, that's got to be a pretty nice award to win because you do know that that means a lot of these are going to sell. Uh, Best Buy means uh, most people can afford it. And look at how appealing this thing is. It's beautiful. In a way, actually, uh, it looks a little bit like this. I mean, in the same ballpark in that it's sort of a a sweeping this one more of a spay blade than this this is more of a warren cliff i guess uh, but you get that beautiful spay style blade uh with with that drop down it, it almost looks like a clip i gotta say i i see a slight curve there but that could be because it's hollow ground and it's being shot on a slight angle um thumb stud you've got the the uh, crossbar lock there and what i really like about this is that the handle to me seems kind of innovative because when you look towards the pommel, you can see it's a coffin handle. It looks like it looks like the handle. If you block off the rest of the knife and just look at the pommel, it looks like a Laredo Bowie or any sort of coffin handle Bowie. And I love that tail end of a handle. But as you move forward, uh, what's his name? I'm sorry. Uh, Zach Whitmore gives you a finger guard up there. A pretty chunky finger guard, so you're not going to slide on if you have to puncture with that blade. And remember, if you do have to puncture with that blade, if it's something shallow, you'll be fine. But if you really have to stab it into something, 
with that blade, uh, you're going with that blade profile, you're going to want a guard on there because it's not going to slip in as easily as sort of a spear point would. Really cool knife. Uh, it looks like a contoured uh, handle, but it didn't say anything in the uh, in the write up. 14C28N and uh, available in October. Also, uh, G10 in black, green uh, micarta with black blade, and then a Damascus handle with that Jirabuta wood or Kira boot with wood on the handle. All right, lastly is from Buck Knives. This is the Buck 663 Alpha Guide. Now, this is a relatively new knife. I think it came out two years ago. I know we covered it here on Knife Life News. And uh, this one is a classic all-purpose outdoors uh, knife drop point. Uh, pretty darn attractive, full tang with slabs. Uh, but they're releasing a, a special model here with Magna Cut and a and and uh, carbon fiber scales. So it'll keep it real light. And then being Magna Cut, it'll be virtually indestructible and perfect because. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But being Magna Cut, you know, uh, it's it's a great all around steel. It's great for outdoors because of its uh, combination. It's got the weird, you know, usually you can only get two out of three with Magna Cut. You pretty much get three out of three in terms of toughness, edge retention and corrosion resistance. So it's kind of the perfect steel for an outdoor knife, as long as you're not banging too hard, I would imagine, because then there are other steels like 3B and other steels that are super, super tough and springy. So uh, uh, that's coming out. When is that available? I don't know when this is available. My apologies. Uh, hang on. Let me hang on. Hang on. People are telling me to do my research. So I will say, oh, this one's available now. So go check it out if you're interested. You do have to go to buck.com to get that. All right. Coming up, we're going to check out uh, a couple of new things I have here in the collection and, and uh, in my EDC. Uh, but before we do, I want to remind you to check out some of the merch we have over on thenifejunkie.com. You can go to thenifejunkie.com slash shop and check out uh, a, a whole modicum of t-shirts. Uh, Jim went on a, cre uh, uh, a creative crazy bent and made a whole bunch of t-shirts. Uh, we have mugs. We have uh, hoodies. We have uh, uh, anyone use mice anymore. We have a mouse pad, a uh, dartboard, whatever you want. Go check it out right there at the knife junk junkie.com slash shop okay coming up the state of the collection right here on the knife junkie podcast the shockwave tactical torch is your ultimate self-defense companion featuring a powerful led bulb that lasts 100,000 hours a super sharp crenulated bezel and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts don't settle for ordinary choose the shockwave tactical torch the knife junkie.com slash shockwave and now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. First one in the state of the collection is the Fin Wolf from Cold Steel. All right, interesting about the Fin Wolf. I've been appreciating um, the Scandi grinds lately because I've been dabbling and experimenting with actually using my knives and uh, cutting stuff with them. And I really like how they carve. So, I got my brother a fin wolf years ago, and he takes it with him. He he has an annual trip to the Sierras every year with his son, my nephew, and they go. and He always takes the fin wolf and says it's awesome with its triad lock. It's really nice ergonomics and that really nice uh, three point four inch Scandi ground blade. So I finally got one. This one's in Aus Eight. I think that's what they are in period, and uh, but they do come in a bunch of different colors. This thing is great. I uh, I really, really like it. Uh, I've only had it a couple of days, uh, but I've used it for various, you know, well, I used it to feather stick last night. I used it for uh, making, you can see some wax on there. I was making some uh, sort of improvised wax fire starter things, and I used this. And so that's about it so far. But I think this is going to ride in my EDC bag. I think I'm going to switch out. Uh, for a just to go a little bit lighter, I'm going to switch out uh, the massive uh, folding tanto I have in there right now, and uh, and put this in here. Uh, put this in there. But another cool thing, I saw the movie Sisu this past weekend. It is so cool. Highly recommend it. About the ex uh, Finnish 
commando who just wants to, you know, uh, who, who's who's a, a gold prospector in the Lapland as the Nazis are fleeing after their defeat. And oh my God, it's so cool. And he has a he has a number of knives on him with that classic Puko shape. And he does something spectacular with one of them. Uh, so you might want to check that out. It is so cool. Uh, but I love this uh, Finn Wolf. I'm really excited to have it. This would be a great candidate for an orange handle knife. I know that I know that they make this in an orange handle and several other co colors. This would be a great one to get for that because this is an awesome outdoor and camp knife. And, uh, you know, it's the sort of thing you drop this in the in the leaves. You might it might be harder to locate. Triad lock, always fantastic and welcome. Okay, next up, um, I bought a saw not too long ago on YouTube that I talked about that you can do that with, and I thought that was cool. And it's pretty big, and it's an ergonomic sort of axe handle. Uh, it's okay, uh, but it's kind of rattly and feels really cheap, and I wasn't sure about how um, saws are. I know about knives. I don't know about saws. Um, so I saw a couple of videos, got a couple of recommendations from y'all, which I appreciate for Silky. Silky folding saws are made in Japan, and yeah, they are uh, a step above, at least compared to that um, to that uh, Amazon purchase. Not that that Amazon knife is is not usable, but I don't know. This just feels way better. It's nice and tight. It doesn't. At, at, there's no play at all in that pivot. The other one has tons of play. And I'm just looking at these teeth. They are wicked. I haven't used this yet. It just showed up yesterday. Uh, but you have, I, it didn't show up. I just bought it yesterday at REI with my, um, with my points. You know, you get that, those annual points if you're a member. And really great. You have this position and then you also have this position. Uh, and both positions are so solid. Um, I can't wait to use this. I've also heard uh, from, like I said, a number of you and people uh, who have put out reviews that the teeth on these are amazing and that the heat treat on the blade is outstanding and it stays sharp for a long, long time. So I'm very excited. I'm also excited to discover a new new brand of anything that uh, is excellent, but I'm excited because they have a bunch of different models. And if I like this, and I am more into sawing logs, and I don't mean snoring out there. Uh, maybe I'll be able to check those out, too. Uh, and when I say be able, I mean with some justification. All right, last up, I got these. Uh, this was an Amazon um, $6 impulse purchase, but they're survival cards. And um, so here, this is a little felt bag, and you open it up like this. and inside. They were all in their plastic bags. I will return them to the plastic bags, but for, for our purposes here, I took it out. So here you have a card, a metal card here, steel, and you can punch these things out. And you can see there's a knife. You can see fish hooks. You can see an arrowhead there, of uh, sewing needles, little saw here, all sorts of little tools. And then here... You got like a big frog gig. You've got bigger tooth saw. I'm not sure what that's for. It looks like one of those things for hanging pictures, but I'm sure it's not for that. Uh, some more hooks and other things. Oh, I think these are like sinkers that you fold and put the line through or something. Uh, here you've got a fork, more hooks. Man, we're going fishing. More hooks and a little arrowhead there. Needles or toothpicks. I guess those are needles. And then... This last card has a bunch of saws on it. Another arrowhead. I, I, To me, I think this is very cool. Uh, will I ever use it? No. Does it fit in an Altoids tin conveniently? No. But it all fits in this little, this little thing nicely and conveniently and can tuck away easily in a go bag. And man, if it gets to the point where you're using tools like this, A, you'll really be glad you had them. And B, things are bad. So... Uh, you'll be glad you had them. In any case, six bucks on. Uh, ow, damn, it's sharp too. Six bucks on Amazon and made in America. <laughs> just kidding. They're made in China. That's why they're six bucks. Let's just be honest. All right, let's get to let's get to these beauties in front of me. Now, I'm going to talk about double-edged 
fixed blade knives. These are all customs. And I did not put that in the title, um, but I think that's important to stipulate here. Uh, there are knives you won't see in this list, like my favorite, <laughs> favorite knife, pretty much. Uh, the T. Kell Knives Agent 001. This is the knife I designed that uh, Tim Kell and, and I collaborated on, and he's been making, and man alive, are they absolutely stunningly beautiful and well-made. Uh, I love this knife, but these are... I'm considering them custom productions. What's that mean, Bob? These are large batch knives, meaning uh, there are more than three of them made at a time, more than 15 of them made at a time. Uh, and yes, you can customize them with your own handles and uh, steels and blade finishes, uh, but I'm not considering them for this list due to the quantities in which they're made. Happily, <laughs> on my... Uh, and so uh, a great example of the type, just not exactly what we're talking about here. What we are talking about is, and I will show you my very first of this, and that is the Attention to Detail Mercantile or A2D Medium Fighter. This is a uh, uh, six inch blade here with beautiful jimping and a um, custom hand well i mean the whole thing is custom i ordered it uh from douglas esposito uh, but i had seen on a different knife that he had been using tortoise shell and that's one of my favorite materials period uh, on glasses on bass guitar on just guitars in general pick guards um in old um accoutrement like stuff from the 20s and 30s you saw that on a lot of stuff i just think it's beautiful of course nowadays it's not actual tortoise shell uh but to see it on offer with this absolutely uh, beautiful bayonet style fighting blade. Um, I had to have it. And so uh, this, I remember when I bought it was definitely out of my price range, but um, he was cool and worked with me on it. And um, he was just, this was just before he transitioned into folding knives. And that's pretty much exclusively what he does. So when you find an a2D fixed blade, they are now very expensive. <laughs> I mean, this was for me at, at the time I bought it, 450 bucks, I believe, was pretty expensive and still is. I don't just buy these knives like willy nilly. Um, but he uh, now, when you find a fixed blade knife of any ilk, small, large, Tonto or fighter version or, or clip point, I think that's the, the most valuable. Uh, they're going to be pretty darn expensive. So uh, this to me is an, an incredible knife. I love it. I, I'm a big fan of the double-edged fighter. So when it's asymmetrical uh, and you have room to put the thumb way up and that top edge is not as slicey as the bottom edge, but dang it, it'll still do the trick for a fight. And that's what this is for. And when I say fight, of course... I'm, I'm speaking of something that doesn't really happen. Uh, I would imagine very much in the world um, nowadays, especially, but some sort of knife fight, uh, not just like getting jumped and shiving someone, but a knife fight, like two guys squaring off with a knife. Probably doesn't happen that much in the Western world. I, I wonder if it still happens places in the Philippines. Um, I, I want to believe it does because I've trained in there that style, you know, in Cali and, there's a mythos behind it that I think is pretty cool. <laughs> a knife culture, you know what I mean? All right, next up, this one is from um, Jed Hornbeak. This is the Necromance. And, oh man, it's got a very tight fit on the sheath. Not tight like obnoxious, but uh, it pops right off. And uh, so this is the Necromance. He made three of these, I believe, when he made this. one, uh, Two of them were like this with the, with the double bevel hollow grind and the Scandi Swedge. And then the third one had a really deep hollow grind on one side. No, 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 I'm sorry. It was a flat grind on one side and a chisel on the other. So, you know, a chisel ground blade. Um, I'm really pleased I got the one that I that uh, struck my fancy the most with this beautiful uh, Coyote G10. This has a feel to it that is, I, I, it's hard for me to explain because uh, it's a it's a three off, so to speak. He only made three of these, I guess. And um, but it feels it feels in the best way like a factory like 
ah, I don't know how to explain it, but the handle is so perfectly made, so perfectly contoured. I can't believe a human made it. Uh, so uh, that's I don't mean that as a backhanded compliment. I mean that as an as a a full throated. This thing is incredible and defies. Um, I don't know, defies my knowledge of how how one makes a knife. I know that he's using uh, uh, mills and uh, all that to make this, but it's such a fine handmade knife. It's it's hard to describe. Uh, the handle here is really well set up for a saber fighting grip. So you can see how it bulges out. It kind of it has that dip bulges out here to really nestle in the palm. So you get a great thrusting plat uh, platform or great thrust. Yeah thrusting structure i should say where this is pushing right into the palm which pushes straight up the arm you get a lot of control on a thrust with this and then if you're using it for slashing and real close in fighting you know this is a fighting knife uh your hand your thumb is going to come up here uh so again like the a2d uh a2d fighter we were just looking at it's a an asymmetrical double-edged knife that allows the hand you know, with that bayonet grind allows the thumb to come up and really dig into the back of the spine to add some pressure to that cutting. This one has that really nice fuller in it. Uh, I would love to see this in a in in a seven inch blade version or six and a half inch bladed version. Uh, as it stands, this is I think four and three quarters. Oh, four and a quarter inches long. So be really cool to see this in a six inch or seven inch blade. Uh, next up is from Dirk Pinkerton, and that is the Cave Bear. Uh, this is a double-edged, definitely <laughs> a fighting knife. This is uh, no doubt a fighting knife, and a very, very strong Pakal-style knife. And I say strong because it doesn't have to be. This is obviously influenced by that uh, Pakal mm, fighting knife style, where that point is offset and drifting uh, north like that. So in a, in a back fisting motion, the, in a back fist motion, I should say, uh, that tip is right where you need it to be, uh, as opposed to glancing off to the side with a curved blade. But if you hold this thing in, um, standard grip, there's all that jimping there. It also is very reminiscent of a Middle Eastern, uh, like a Kanjar, Kanjar, I believe double-edged curved knife. Um, so again, Dirk Pinkerton with the with the ethnic ethnographic mashups in his blade styles, because uh, I think the Pakal thing is more of a Filipino uh, origin and the uh, Filipino come Mexico origin, I guess. Uh, and then and then this is obviously a Middle Eastern uh, application of that blade shape. So I love this thing. It's it's really beautiful. It caught my I across a crowded room in the in the baller room. I think it was Blade Show 2022 and uh, 21. I can't remember now. But Pinkerton, uh, that man, Dirk makes incredible knives on his grinder. Look at that. I mean, his handmade knives are so beautiful. I, I just I can't get enough. All right, so there you go. Uh, that is the Cave Bear. And um, I love the Ronald McDonald sort of handle. <laughs> By that I mean the red, orange, and yellow are are bright and cheerful and then that black blade is so final and definitive uh, that i love the cognitive dissonance of this knife okay next up from ron Steele, uh this is his prime model and uh this is one of his earlier models and i requested it double-edged he had never made one until this point and um knocked it out of the park there i am using sports references you know me uh I remember Blade Show 2021 uh, going back and forth with him about the handle. Uh, not going back and forth, but he was asking me all these questions like, what liner would you like? I'm like, eh, let's go with black. What sub liner would you like? I'm like, okay, this guy is in it. I love it. So this has two liners, black and gray, maroon style, my, or not maroon style, maroon colored micarta handle <clears throat> with those divots in it. So nice. Uh, it's got a sort of squared off handle that feels very, very nice in hand. Uh, it, it's not in any way sharp squared off. It's that sort of squared off that you know it's not going to roll. It feels very secure. Again, we've got this sort of bayonet style uh, secondary, smaller secondary 
uh, top edge with the jimping. Great place to rest the hand um, or rest the thumb. So this his prime model, that's this model, beautiful drop point, um, has uh, the single edged version is also very, very nice. Um, and he's got a Bowie and he's got all sorts of different. He's got a couple of Warren Cliffs, Ron Steele. He makes some incredible looking knives. Uh, but when I got this, I thought it was kind of interesting because I really loved his Bowie. But I opted for this because it was the one of the most unique and interesting uh, profiles on a drop point I had seen in a long time. And, uh, you know, drop points are the least tempting. And when I see a tempting drop point, I go for it. And that was this. That just sounded interesting. Okay, so right here on the pommel, peaked pommel there. Perfect for thumb wrap. Bang. This is a great knife. Awesome sheath, too. So far, all incredible sheaths. I guess I'd say my least favorite was is the A2D. I had a leather sheath made for it, but I've moved back to the Kydex just for uh, actual carry. All right, next up, this one is from JB Knife and Tool out of Texas. Uh, this is the Ditch Pick. Uh, when we're talking JB Knife and Tool and you see the prefix ditch, it means uh, a very thin blade steel, 16th of an inch blade steel. This is very springy 1095 blade steel. I say very springy because uh, the way they test these um, very thin ditch models, they, they do all sorts of abuse to them and uh, they bend and flex pretty nicely. I haven't really bent this one. All right, I just did. It bends nicely, uh, though not like a fillet knife or anything like that. It's still rigid. It's still great for you know, the kind of work it's meant for, but, um, but in a pinch, it'll, it'll bend and 1095 is also uh, pretty tough. Uh, so this is a double-edged version of what started as a Pical only knife. And then, uh, you started, started to see a little bit of the front edge in a bayonet grind come out, which I got to say is the most appealing in terms of pure visuals. Uh, but when this drop was happening i just opted for a uh, full double edge i thought if i didn't i would regret it who wouldn't regret it when offered a full double edge to not take it um especially if you know it's in your intention is to use it in this reverse uh grip you don't really need that bayonet grind for the thumb so anyway i had to go full shiny on both sides i love their their logo there you can see jb and then that uh, Lone Star out of Texas. This has a nice um, uh, peel ply grip on the G10. I have seen in the past that they've done some um, uh, special releases of scales, but I've slept on them and not gotten them. Uh, this is, I, I have sort of zoned in on my favorite method of carry for this, and it's with the IBW strap, and it's that front scout. So right in the front where my belt um buckle should be i just slide the belt buckle over a little bit all right next up is a another one this one is a dagger which is rare in this category and this is the pocket rocket from uh, auxiliary manufacturing michael jarvis out of reno nevada making just incredible knives i have two of his things two yeah i have two of his knives the pocket bowie and this, I, oh no, three, I knew it. I have the push dagger too, the little push dagger. Uh, this thing, I love it. I keep turning it in my hand because the handle is so spectacular. Uh, it's octagonal and cross section, uh, taking into account uh, two sides of that being uh, the width of the full tang. And then you've got uh, the other angles on there. It really makes the, the knife lock in your grip, no matter how you grab it. And of course, in perfect situation, I would grab it like this, totally uh, horizontally. That doesn't make sense, but totally, you know, exactly intended in reverse grip in my hand. But if you're grabbing a knife in duress, who knows how it's going to end up. So if it ends up sideways or canted in any angle, you have all of these facets uh, with which to grip um, just flawlessly and then you have on both sides 
towards the pinky and towards the forefinger, these scoops, these swales, these choils cut out. So the same thing applies no matter if it's in this sort of shovel grip or in the standard grip, you've got a place for your forefinger and thumb and pinky uh, to nestle into. So I absolutely love this knife. And then, of course, coming north on this, I, I believe it's 80 CRV too. Um, you've got a perfectly ground double-edged three-inch dagger blade. So it it carries so nicely in this awesome sheath. Uh, ships with a, a nearly discrete carry concept clip that uh, rides in the belt very well. So in the waistband like this, uh, kind of coming up that that sort of area right here in the fold of your leg and kind of skirting your belly. <laughs> You know, this uh, nestles very nicely. Uh, straight handle works great. Sometimes that curved handle uh, uh, sort of cups your belly. That also works great. But in this case, uh, it's totally out of the way. And with this right up here, because of those uh, swales and scoops and, and choils there, just pinch it between your in the web of your hand here, and it, it just draws perfectly. I love this knife. Uh, it's the Auxiliary Manufacturing Pocket Rocket. Um, in the dagger, because I, I believe he makes that in a Pakal too, which would also be sweet. All right, next up, this is from Stroop Knives. This is the SD1. SD1 is a um, thrust, uh, what am I trying to say? Punch dagger, push dagger here. Uh, but it's got the kind of handle I really like. This was my 2023 uh See, this is what I was seeking out at Blade Show 2023. So my big purchase. Um, uh, I wanted a push dagger and I looked all around and this was the one I landed on. There wasn't too much, uh, but this definitely had what I wanted. I, if possible, I, I wanted a chisel grind just for stoutness, knowing that this is a thrusting blade, but knowing that a chisel grind will also be good for slashing. But I also wanted the asymmetrical handle. I didn't want the T-shaped handle I wanted that blade to pr protrude from between my swear word finger and my forefinger like that, as opposed to between the swear word finger and the ring finger uh, in the middle. Uh, that works great too, but I just feel like I have more control here. Um, so that's what I was seeking. And this is what I found. It has that really nice, nice napped texture that I like. Not everyone's a fan, but I love that napping texture. And, uh, and then a steep, grind on both sides flat grind leading to an a chisel edge which i have touched up it works great in a slash with pressure i gotta say it's not you're not going to be cutting any uh salami with this uh, but it is uh you you will split some salami or gash it or or you know tear nastily in, into it but you won't get fine slices with it uh, but a uh, great knife and this one is very comfortable to carry in the waistband I have this double discrete carry concepts clip on there and imagine looking down and seeing it uh, to the right of your pocket, uh, right of your uh, belt and your pants like that. So this just kind of comes over your belt and then everything else pretty much hides away under uh, the waistband. And uh, I like that in the appendix carry. Next up, this is only there's a I, I tried two styles of carry and only one of them is practical uh, in the waistband at the three o'clock, though. I used to carry it when I first got it scout style on the back, but I never do that anymore. Scout style on the back. I just don't do. I guess that's just scout style. OK, this is the Black Rock Knives Monkey Thumper in custom. Well, it's all custom, but in double edge per my uh, request. Uh, this is a really cool this is a fighting knife period i mean uh look at the angle of the handle to the blade um yeah that would be useful for carving and cutting but i mean really it's like a kukri with that uh with that angle there and then the back edge sharp really accommodates a lot of back cutting stuff the handle is super comfortable and in the in the um forward grip i sort of forget that the hole is there and you don't need, the, even if the hole weren't there, it'd be very, very comfortable. I guess you could, I don't like it like this. If you're going to choke back and maybe do some light chopping, if you're using this for a survival knife or something like that, 
Uh, I guess you could swing it around like this uh, in an offensive way, but I, I wouldn't want my finger in there. Um, I just prefer this. And then in reverse grip, uh, same thing, same thing. Uh, it does work with the handle and, or with the ring, and it is good for retracting the blade, but I prefer it using it as if it weren't there at all. And this is a very comfortable placement for the thumb, and it's just a really great grip. So if you wanted to use this knife, I'm going to come over here to the main cam. If you wanted to use this knife in a, you know, a reverse grip whoosh, um, kind of way, look, that, that blade curve puts the point right where you want it to be in a back fist motion without having to change the angle of your arm or your, or your wrist. Um, yeah, this thing is, this thing is great. I don't carry it as much as I should. Uh, I carried it a lot when I first got it and then sort of haven't in a while. So just bringing it out is, uh, making me want to carry it again. So that's the monkey thumper from black rock knives. <clears throat> again, you see that irregular napped feature on, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You see that irregular napped feature on both the handle and on the blade steel. And I love it. I love the way it looks and it feels great. Uh, that irregularity feels feels good in hand. Um, I remember uh, Ken Vahikite talking about how people were like, oh, with that nap texture in the blade, that's just a way to hide the fact that you don't know how to grind bevels. And he, and he had to show everyone, yes, I can grind bevels. This is my aesthetic. And so there you go. All right. Second to last here is from Dirk Pinkerton. Again, pardon me, this is the Razorback, another custom handmade knife by Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, it is a double-edged Bowie. This is his uh, homage to the Hell's Bells Bowie by Bill Bagwell. That's a uh, five and seven-eighths inch blade. Uh, recur or not recurve, but uh, upswept, both edges, razor sharp and hollow ground. Uh, as I said, Bill Bagwell's Hell's Bells Bowie was a big influence on this knife, but also you can see uh, there's some of that Middle Eastern influence too uh, from the Kanjar. Uh, to me, I, I frankly, I know that this is what uh, um, Dirk calls this a Bowie uh, when you look at it on his website and stuff. Uh, to me, it, it it's not, but he's the guy who made it. It, it is a Bowie or a, a clip point there when you can see that long clip. The whole thing is a clip. And at that point, I say, you're being cheeky. Uh, when, is a, when is a long clip a Persian? You know, And I think this is flirting with that. So uh, I appreciate that. There's a, little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of mystery in the design. What do we call this thing? We call it awesome because it carries beautifully. It's got the perfect length handle. It's like, uh, you know, I talk about my hand size, about medium. Um, sometimes it tends towards the small with some gloves and sometimes I need medium. Other times I have fit in large gloves like those assassin gloves from, uh, that bike riding company. Now I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, my point is perfect size handle. If you have big giant mitts, it'll be just enough. If you have medium size hands like me, it's, it's perfect, perfect in reverse grip. And then I can get everything I need in forward grip. He does make this in a bayonet grind uh, where that double edge starts a little bit further forward. Um, but this has a, a little bit more edge to it. And in, I'm going to go here, right here. This, this knife accelerates at this kind, of, um, this kind of fighting. Reverse grip because you've got this shape in here. You can trap if you can trap. I mean, if it's something that's actually going to happen, uh, it's going to happen with a knife shaped like this where you really can retain it. And then when you untrap, you're also cutting, cutting through. And then, um, I mean, it's just a brilliant knife. It's a great design and it's not, I mean, it's scary looking. I wouldn't want to face anyone coming out with this, but it's not audaciously, uh, freakishly scary looking, um, until you realize, uh, what it is and what it can do. All right. Last up, another one that is, uh, just incredible from, Another one of my absolute favorites. This is from Matt Chase and Hogtooth Knives. Now, this one is a collaboration with, in essence, me and my parents. My parents bought it for me for my 50th birthday. I designed it, um, and Matt Chase made it. And it was the first, and I think so far, only um, sub-hilt fighter, Loveless-style sub-hilt fighter he's ever made. So it was definitely a, a uh, what do you... 
you know how people throw out, are, around the word journey. Everyone's on a journey. I'm on a weight loss journey or this. This knife was truly a journey, I think, for um, Matt. Just this. He had never done a steel quite like this. And the process was very, very cool. You know, he he's an expert Damascus maker, but this was a, a new sort of uh, pattern for him. And then the hilt and the sub hilt made from wrought iron salvaged from the Goodfellow or no, the Longfellow Bridge in Boston. And then some vintage black micarta there. And then that gorgeous stag. Uh, the handle itself is uh, including the pins, which are silver. Uh, 22 pieces or 27 he can he can comment below and let me know uh i love absolutely absolutely love this knife i mean it this is my main dueling knife when i have to defend my honor or my family's honor this is what i bring uh, look at these look at the hilt it's so cool you have to check out hogtooth knives go uh to hogtooth knives on instagram he is a uh an incredible smith he's a what do you call it uh uh, a journeyman smith and man someday he'll be a master smith he to me he's already a master all right thank you so much for joining me on these 10 great custom double-edged fixed blade knives uh i these are my i got i gotta say my favorite type of knife period i love them all really down to the three dollar walmart bait knife i'm drawn in by them all uh but this is my absolute favorite type let me know what your favorite type of knife is. Drop it in the link uh, in the comments below. And if you haven't, let me know uh, what you're carrying uh, in your EDC today. Please let me know. Uh, it doesn't have to be poetic. Just say uh, Benchmade Rift. And I'll be like, cool. Good for me to know. All right. That's it for me. Be sure to join us on Sunday for a great interview and tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.